There we go. Good evening. It's great to have everybody here today. <laughs> welcome to For the Least of the Ministries. And I welcome every and each and individual person on here. And I hope you are blessed today. If you're not here on the channel as it is right at this moment, please, if you enjoy this message that I have for today for the Bible study, share it with your friends. Share, like, and subscribe. Uh, tell everybody about it. And if you're watching this and viewing this later on in the day on YouTube or whatever, I hope you're blessed and touched by the message that's given today. It's entitled, It's All Behind You. Not, okay, so it's all behind you, overcoming past guilt. Now, I have to ask, and don't forget, since this is Bible study, it's open platform. What I mean by open platform is you can have your mic unmuted. Because I'll ask questions, and I am more than open for you to answer questions. Or if you have any questions, please feel free to ask questions at any point in time. I hope you got a pen and a piece of paper and your Bible ready. Because it is Bible study. So we will be having scripture. So I hope you have your Bibles ready. And um, you hope you get blessed by this message about, you know, um, it's all behind us. Overcoming past guilt. So the question I have here, has anybody ever had to deal with past guilt in their life? Yes, me. Okay. Can you share a little bit with us if, if you're open to? I'm open to it. Okay. It was a guilt of something that happened when my um, my father has passed away. I was not allowed to see my father because I was in this place where they, that is gonna be a part that I'm gonna share, but just to make it short, they would not allow me to go to see my father. And by the time I got to the hospital, he died. And I lived for, with guilt for the nine, the nine year because I felt like I didn't have a chance to say goodbye to him. And wow. Yeah. And I was sealed from that. I, mm -hmm. I I let it go and Pastor Eddie. Yeah. Um, I have guilt over many decisions and choices that I've made in my in my life, in my past life. And, and you know, I... they, they go very far back, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's not just, just recent, but it goes back many, many years. I'm sure many of us can relate to that making bad decisions in our life. But well, I try no. not to feel guilty about it because I've asked for forgiveness for many different things from the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, the devil sometimes brings it back to your, your memory and says, uh, you, you're not forgiven. Um, you, you need to feel bad for what you've done. And, and so th the devil reminds you of those sins that you committed that are forgiven and forgotten by God. And that's so true. And, and that can be even back to childhood memories. Mm -hmm. yeah. things that happened in your childhood uh things that you've done when you're you were younger really young and you still haven't um asked for forgiveness or you have asked for forgiveness but the devil wants to bring it up dig it back up out of the ground yes. and throw it back in your face right yeah. but i want you to know i want everybody here to know that you've been forgiven but you cannot forget and at times you wonder if you'll ever get past your past have you ever had that happen where you feel that you can never get past your past I do. yes because sometimes you keep making the same mistakes that that you feel bad that you made in the past <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah and anybody else yes eddie okay i yes i i do have moments when i have that I'm thinking, you know, am I going to ever go past those past, the, the past of my life? And uh, what I do is I ask the Lord to come and I give it to the Lord. So he take those and I keep on going and pray. 
That's the only way I could get rid of the devil. Yeah, that's the so true. Lord, the, the good Lord is there for me. That has, everyone. Everyone. Has anybody ever had where they have uh, guilt and they feel guilt in their life because of something they've did in the past and the devil keeps bringing it up and they feel guilty? Yes. Okay. Uh, that happens to everybody, even to the best of them, even to the, the best of preachers. They, they, they have guilt in their lives. Uh, they have where they still feel that they're uh, holding on to um, things in their past that they haven't let go. And the devil tries to trip us up with those things. You know what I'm saying? But through true guilt, the Holy Spirit seeks to draw you closer to God. Yes. So even in your guilty times that you feel guilty, God can draw you closer to him through the Holy Spirit. When you feel conviction on your heart, it's because the Holy Spirit is bringing conviction to your heart to help you get rid of your guilt in your past, your sins in your life that you've you've sinned maybe that day or you've had thoughts of, of sinning on doing something. And God wants to forgive you, though. So when you feel guilty, it's because the Holy Spirit is bringing you to a place of closeness to God to get rid of that guiltiness and that sin in your life so you can draw closer to the master. Okay, but through faults um, and claiming guilt, Satan seeks to separate us from God. When you when you don't feel guilty about things and you live on your past and you let your past sins haunt you, the devil is seeking to separate you from God with that because he makes you feel like you're unworthy. You're no good. Yes. How can God use you when you're so imperfected? How many here are, are perfect? No one. Anybody on here perfect? Nope. No. No. There's none amongst us that's perfect. I'm not perfect. The best of the preachers in the in in, 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 in televangelists and that aren't perfect. We're all going to make mistakes and fall. We're all going to fall into temptation. Like I said in my message before about the sucker punch, we fall into where we get tempted by the devil, but it's what we do with the temptation that makes it sin. If we resist the devil, then we don't sin. But if we accept the temptation that the devil's put before us, that's when it becomes sin. The Bible tells us for him to know to do right and do it not to him, it is sin, right? Okay, I'm going to read here. Um, Romans chapter 8 from 1 to 4 and it says here there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus see here the word in those are in Christ Jesus who walk after the not after the flesh but after the spirit so when we walk after the, the spirit we don't walk in the flesh we have to walk after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. That's why we have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Okay. Or that the law cannot do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And this for sin commanded sin. In the flesh. Okay. That the righteous of the law. Might be fulfilled. In us. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. We need to walk after the spirit of God. We should not walk after the flesh. When we start letting our fleshly nature. Get a hold of us. And get in the way. Sometimes it gets in the way of the move of the Holy Spirit. God wants to direct us through the spirit. And sometimes we hinder it by walking in the flesh. Now, when you walk in the flesh, let me ask you this, Annette. When you walk in the flesh, is it easy for you to get mad at your sister? No. No? If I'm walking in the flesh? Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's oh, no. 
Think about it. <laughs> I think it's easy for me to get uh get to get mad at my sister if I if I yeah. in the flesh. In the flesh, think, right? Yes. I think Annette is close to being a perfect lady. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and and, and, and Joanne, jo Joanne, if you're walking after the flesh, is it easy for you to get mad at Mike? Yeah, but we need to remember to submit to God first and then resist the devil and he'll flee. So as long as we remember to submit to God, he can help us deal with that where we can right. answer more appropriately. Amen. Right. Amen. But yeah, but the main question I was asking you is if you walk after the flesh, can you do you find it easy to get mad at your husband? Mike just said it's easy to get mad at him regardless. <laughs> and, and, and is, it easy for Mike, is it easy for Mike to get mad at you if he's walking in the flesh? It's easy for you to get regardless. <laughs> okay, regardless. Regardless. And see, for me, if I'm walking in the flesh, it'd be so easy for me to get mad at people or disappointed with people or disgusted with people, give up on people, give up on the ministry, give up on reading, give up on praying, give up on seeking God if I walk in the flesh. But, but if we walk in the spirit, as Christ walked in the spirit and we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, and we have the love of God in our life, we find it difficult to get angry at one another because we're no longer walking after the what? The flesh. Amen. The flesh. Right. So when we walk in the spirit and when we're guided by the spirit of God and we walk in love, joy, peace, meekness, tenderness, long suffering, we walk in the fruits of the spirit. And we walk after the commandments of God. What's God's first commandment? Love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. And? We're not supposed to have any gods before him, but after we love him with everything, we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters. So right. Love so, your neighbor um, as you love as yourself. Your, as yourself. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's what it says. Love thy neighbor as thyself. God speaks in the whole Bible about what? Towards one another. Love. 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 Love your enemies. Hate the devil. Hate the sin. But love the brother and, or yeah, sister. Love right? the sinner. Yeah. Love the sinner, but hate the sin. Right? Uh, you know what says, is the hardest? Who is the hardest to love? It says that you're to love those that persecute you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And do what? Not only love them, but do what? Forgive. Forgive, Forgive and do good unto them, right? Do good by them. Mm -hmm. If your name, if your if your brother asks you for to walk a mile, you should walk what? Two. That, right. Do more than two. Walk six. If your brother asks you for your coat, give him your sandals, right? As well, right? If you see somebody in need. And you're able to to, to minister to their to their need, meet their what? Needs. Meet their needs. What's this ministry title? For the least of them ministries. For the least of them ministries. Not for the least of ourselves, but for the least of them. For every single person, for the least of them, for everybody, not yourself. We're not to fill ourselves and our, our self greed and our self wants and our self glorification, but we're to glorify who? God. God. And to whom God has forgive, there is forgiveness. Has anybody ever um, know what the most fabulous creation that was created that is really remarkable? Human beings. Okay, you say the human being, yeah, but I'm, I'm talking that God created that, but I'm talking man created. Oh, sorry. The airplane. Nope. <laughs> the whiteboard, because it's remarkable. <laughs> Funny. 
Because with a whiteboard, you can write on the whiteboard and then rub it off and then rewrite on the whiteboard and rub it off again. It's remarkable. <laughs> That's funny. So picture a whiteboard, okay? And on that whiteboard is all your sins. Written on there in black marker, all over there, your different sins that you've committed before you accepted Christ. Then all of a sudden you accept Christ and, and he takes that mark, that whiteboard marker thing and goes, shh. And wipes it all off. You are now clean, white slate. Says you're clean as white as snow, right? Yeah. Your sins have been washed as white as snow. Snow. He wipes the board clean and doesn't remark your sins back on that board. Okay. And they're Never wiped away from the board, never to be seen again. Right, never to be seen again. He <laughs> caches your sins as far as the east from the west. west. Do you know why he caches them as far as the east from the west? Because they can't meet the east they and west. Cannot, that's exactly, they cannot meet. North and south always meets in the center, always meets at the pole. North pole, south pole, they, they all meet together. They re-meet. But east and west, they never meet together they she keep going on and on forever and ever so he throws our sins as far as the east from the west because they never meet yes joanne i find it interesting you know how the enemy will try to beat cause us to beat ourselves up that we're mm -hmm. like i know i could be harder than myself than anyone else and um but how we were talking about how god will wipe us wipe the sin clean when we go up to him in repentance so it's like the enemy will use that to beat yourself up, even though God has said it's forgiven. Right. And it's washed white as clean as white as snow, complete whiteboard. Hold on here. So it's all completely, where are we here? I'm kind of hiding myself. Wiped clean, white, completely white, right? And here's the thing about the whiteboard is God will never, ever, Again, write your sins down. God will never write your sins on the whiteboard. He didn't do it from the beginning. Who writes Who writes your sins on the whiteboard? We Anybody? Do. We do. Oh. The devil doesn't write your sins on the whiteboard. Nope. Oh. The devil makes you. The devil can try to cause you to sin, and when you sin, you've written those sins on the whiteboard yourself. God would never write it there. He takes that marker that's on the board and throws it away. He never writes your name and writes it down again. You know, it's never written there in the beginning from him. The devil doesn't write it on there. We write our own sins on the whiteboard when we sin. The devil can't make you sin. Okay. The devil didn't make Eve sin. Eve chose to take of the unforbiddable fruit, right? Eve chose to. Then Eve took it to Adam, and Adam partook of it because he chose to do so always, also, right? And then when God questioned them, what did each one of them do? They hid Eve themselves. Huh? They tried to hide themselves. Right, they themselves. tried to hide themselves because the Spirit of God left them. So they felt naked without the Spirit of God. You know? And that's how I look at it. They felt naked without the Spirit of God. When, okay. when when we fall into sin and we fall away from God, we don't feel God's presence much in our life anymore. We don't feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in our life. We start to feel separated from God. We start to feel like we're dead to God. Right? You understand what I'm saying? So we, our sins have blocked the spirit from God, of God moving in our hearts and our lives. So that to the point that we feel naked without God. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm getting at Right. And, but what's the first thing Adam and Eve did when, when God came and questioned them on what's going on? What did they do besides hiding themselves? What did they do when God spoke to them? They blame each other. No. no. Eve blamed who? The serpent. Adam. The serpent. Eve oh. blamed the serpent, the devil. Mm -hmm. And then Adam blamed Eve, the wife. Oh. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Each passed the buck on 
Eve didn't pass the buck onto her husband, but that Eve passed it on. Well, the serpent whom you created made me. And then Adam, like, oh, the wife which you brought onto me and you gave unto me made me. No, they had a choice to do or not to do. Adam had a choice to either partake of the fruit or reject it, but he partook of it. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. Sin is only sin when we submit to the sin. We give in to sin. Temptation is just a form to try to get us to slip up to co commit sin. But when God forgives us our sins, he forgives them. And he does one other thing after he forgives our sins. What else does he do? Throws them as far as the east is from the west. Right. And then what else does he do? Remembers them no more. We, that's the word. I'm, that's what I was looking for. He forgets them. He doesn't remember them no more. He forgives us of our past sins. And he forgets them. He forgives and forgets. So when the devil comes to Jesus and tries to remind Jesus and God of our past sins, what does God say? Anybody know? What does God say? Can you repeat that question again, Pastor Eddie? Yeah. When the devil goes to God and Jesus and tries to remind God or Jesus of our past sins, what do they say to the devil? Get ye behind me, Satan. That's what Jesus said to Satan when he was tempting him in the wilderness, right? Yeah. But what, what does he say to the devil when the devil goes to, the, to God and tries to remind God of our past? Get lost. <laughs> get lost. <laughs> get lost. Get lost. He, pray, he paid the price for our sins. Right. He paid the price for our sins. So he says that's been bought and paid for. It's been washed by the blood of the lamb. lamb. It's no longer on the whiteboard no more. It's been washed as clean as snow. No. Right. They've been thrown Man. into the sea of forgetfulness. I remember no more. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Those sins that you're talking about are not there no more. They're not written there no more. There's no evidence of no more. And if there's no smoking gun, no evidence, there's no crime. You know what I'm saying? Jesus. So the crime has not been committed because they're, they've got their... Um, uh, they got their pass, they got their probation, and they've been pardoned for their sins, never to be on record again. So when the devil tries to remind you of your past, always rem if God's going to say that to the devil, then why don't we ourselves look at the devil and say, hey, I've been forgiven of that sin. I've been forgiven. I've been washed in the blood of the lamb. Are you washed? Are you washed? Are you washed in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb? Amen. Are your sins forgiven? Are you bound for heaven? I've been washed in the blood of the lamb. Yes. My sins are forgiven. There's a new name written down in glory. So when he tries to bring yes. up your old, who you are, the old person, God says there's a new name written down in heaven. There's a new name written down in glory. He's giving you a new name. When you're giving your life to him, he's giving you a new name in heaven. Pastor Eddie, no? can I mention, mention something? Yep. Yep. Um, it reminds me of, I think, well, all of us have probably maybe gotten a ticket or two when we were, we're driving in our past. Mm -hmm. And uh, we may have to show up in court uh to talk to the judge about whether you're going to get fined or possible jail time or anything like that but when you go there and you're all afraid and everything you feel guilty for what you did and you don't want to be punished or you know fined or anything like that so um 
it makes you feel like when you're pardoned of what you did and, and said, well, you only have to pay this much or you are not guilty. It just gives you a sense of a big relief. And I was just thinking if I could uh, feel that relief, the same relief that you feel when you're pardoned, when you go to court, um, that God has forgiven me for my sins and I'm pardoned. You, you can. And, 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 and we find that in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. It says there, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you can cry, Abba, Father. You no longer have to have the spirit of bondage on your life that the devil had before with a past sin or something that you've had to deal with in your life in the past and you haven't forgiven yourself. We need, if God can forgive us our sins, we can forgive ourselves. And sometimes what we need to do is forgive ourselves. Pardon? We need to believe that we're totally pardoned. Not only do we need to believe it, we have to stand on it because the proof is there. Yeah. What does what, what, the word tell you when you receive those who are in Christ are in Christ indeed, right? God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a what? Sound mind. mind. Sound mind. Sound mind. The devil yeah. wants to deceive your mind to tell you you're not forgiven, that you can't be forgiven for that, that that's still going to be held accountable for you on the day of judgment. Yet the Bible tells me different. The devil's trying to deceive your mind thinking, making you think that, oh, I have to deal with this the rest of my life. No, I've been to jail. I've been to jail. Hello, I've been to jail. I've spent time in jail. I've got a criminal record. I can't cross the border and go over to the United States. I've got a criminal record. Yes, Pastor Eddie's got a criminal record. Pastor Eddie's been in jail. Pastor Eddie used to be an alcoholic and a drug addict. Sheila, you know me from my past. I used to be a quite the character. I used to ride motorcycles, being street gangs and in violence and in, in, in a lot of trouble with the law. I hated the police. I hated uh, things. I loved roller skating. Uh, my life was going downhill. I was into working at a tattoo shop, doing tattoos. I got tattoos, did tattoos, worked for tattoos, worked for the carnival for 15 years of my life. I had a rough life and I had a wild, crazy life, but God got a hold of my life. And God changed my life. I didn't choose God. The Bible tells me, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have ordained you. God chose me out of the things of the darkness of my life, put my feet upon the solid rock, changed my life, cleansed my life, made me a new creation created in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm a new yeah. person. I'm no longer the Ed Evans I used to be. I'm not that alcoholic, drug addict um, person that was in trouble with the law and in and out of jail, in bondage, spent my time in jail. But the time I spent in jail and I had to do my crime, I did my time, paid my price, and now I'm a free man. I no longer have to worry about going to jail because I don't do the things I used to do. I'm not the same man I used to be. I don't let the devil take over me and take control of my life and have victory over me. I have victory over the devil. The devil doesn't have victory over me. And Amen. every time, every time the devil comes to me to try to remember, remind me of my past, Sheila, I remind the devil of his future. Amen. I don't let the devil get in my head to tell me I'm unworthy. I'm, I can't do it. I, I was a total burnout because of al alcohol and drugs. I was a total burnout. Pastor Debbie can tell you when I was doing the uh, uh, the the Bible course with Pastor Debbie, it was hard for me to read. I, I have a learning disability and I have a problem with reading. I have a problem with memorizing things. But God cleansed my mind because I put on the mind of Christ, not the mind of Ed Evans, the mind of Christ. I study the word daily because it's through the washing of the water of the word that we cleanse our lives and we change our lives over and we become stronger Christ because we get into the word of God and we feast on the word and we put the things of God in here, but we take it from here and we plant it in our heart because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if I speak from my heart, then I'm defeated. If I speak from thy heart, 
of anger and hate and violence and rebellion. If I speak from my heart of cursing and and and, and um, sexual immorality, then that's where my heart is. But if I speak from my heart things to God, I speak godliness. I I speak encouragement. I speak. Um, I can do all things through Christ Jesus to strengthen me. I'm an overcomer. Greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. Uh, you know. Christ has made me new. I stand on the word of God. I put the things of God in my heart and I live it in my heart. Then that's what comes from my heart. That's what comes out of my mouth. Confidence, speaking bold against the devil. Letting the devil know that he has no victory over me because Christ paid the price on the cross of Calvary. And when he rose from the dead, hallelujah, I got all victory in Christ Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that dwells in me that changes me from day to day and brings to my awareness what I need to change to help kill the old man still that tries to creep up inside. And I got to keep burying him. So I keep rising to Christ. As long as I keep doing that, the devil cannot get under my skin about my past because we have victory over the devil over our past. God has forgiven us. So why can't we forgive ourselves? God says he cast it away. So let's cast it. We need to cast our burdens upon the Lord and cast all our things that we have in our past that we can't forgive ourselves for. We need to give that up to God. So it, it can be cast as far as the east from the west. And believe and know that if Christ can forgive us, which he can and he does, then we can forgive ourselves. Amen. If I can say to you, Sheila, I got you mad. And I go, Sheila, I'm sorry. You please forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. We, and you can forgive me. Oh. And you should be able to forgive yourself. You don't have to live with me. But you have to live with yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's easier living with yourself if you can forgive yourself. If you can forgive a sinner... It says love the sin, love love the sinner, but hate the sin. If you can love a sinner, then you should be able to love yourself because you 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 have something in you that they don't have. You have Christ in your life, and they need Christ in their life, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to be strong in God. Okay, I want to read here now in Romans thirty uh, chapter eight, verses thirty one to thirty four, and it says here, "What shall we say to those these things? If God for us, who can be against us?" He that uh, spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to charge of God's elect? Who can lay charge to us? The devil can't lay charge to us. The devil cannot bring up our past and throw it in our face. He can try, but even the devil can't. Throw our past into God's face because we're God's elect. We're God's chosen. God has chosen us, right? It is God that judges, not the devil, not us. We can't judge no man. The Bible says, judge not lest you what? Be judged. Be judged, right? And what measure you judge, you shall be judged as well, right? With what yes. measure we judge. So the only judging is left to is God, okay? Uh, for who layeth any, okay, I did that part, sorry. Uh, who is he that commandeth it? Is Christ that died, yea, rather that it is risen again, he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, and who also maketh intercession for us. The only one that can lay any charges on us for anything in our life is who? God. God. God's the only one that can judge us. God's the only one that can lay charge on us. And when we stand before God, he'll either say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord, or depart from me, you work your iniquity, I never knew you. God is the one that does the judging. That's why he says we stand before the throne of God in judgment before who? Our creator, our God. We answer to God only to God, not to man. And if God has washed our sins away and we're really repentant in our heart and we really serve God to the best of our ability, he, he's a just God that will ju judge us righteously. 
And he'll look and say, oh, that's no longer there. That's no longer there. I, I don't see any of this stuff here. You know? So don't let the devil beat you up and lay charges on you on, on anything. Okay? If you only knew how clean your record was, if you really only knew how clean it was, it's so squeaky clean that even Mr. Clean would be jealous. No? If you could only believe how much the Father loves you, do you know how much God really loves you? Or we can say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Right? We can sing that song. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you really know how much God the Father loves you? If you knew and could grasp how much God loves you, you would just be in awe in yourself to like, wow, God loves me even that much more. God loved you so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. He gave up his only son. How many of us could give up our only child and give that child up to God and sacrifice our own child? How many of us can do that? Pretty difficult, wouldn't it be? I tell you, I, I have one kid in my life, and I know that would be pretty difficult for Pastor Eddie to do that. Go here, go, go I'll take you know, here, here, where's that knife? Okay, you know, I don't know if I could do that. It'd be kind of hard to make that kind of decision, but our God loves us so much. Our God loves us so much that he sent his son to die and forgive us. Jesus stretched out his arms when he was on that cross and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. do. Yeah. How much love can you have? Even on the cross, he was still saving souls. One of the other ones that were on the cross, he said to them, this day you will be with me where? In, in paradise. paradise. He forgave that sin that was with the other one that was hanging on the other cross, a thief that was on the cross, a murderer that was on the cross who deserved the cross. He was even forgave them and told them, you will be with me this day in heaven. They whipped him and they beat him beyond recognition. Yet he said, Father, forgive them. Do you know how much God loves us? Even if we make mistakes and we sin and we fall short, God still loves us. 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 The Bible says he's married to the what? Backslider. That's right. He's married to the backslider. Even if you walk away from God, not that God walks away from you because God would said, no man shall pluck you out of my hand, but don't walk out of the hand of God. And if we do, God says, I'm married to the backslider. I'll leave the 99 to go find the one, one and bring them home. Right? Yes. If you could finally understand that when you give your heart to Jesus, you clothe yourself with Christ. Did you know that? You clothe yourself with Christ because it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. I'm no longer the same creature. When you get baptized, you're dying to Christ. You're being buried with Christ and you're rising a new creation created in who? Christ Jesus, right? Behold, my sins are washed away, right? Nothing but the blood, right? Mm -hmm. So that when God looks at you now, God looking at you now, he doesn't see that junk you used to wear, that old robe you used to wear that's tarnished and full of tears and holes and dirt and bird nesting or whatever, straw hay whatever stuck on it spaghetti sauce whatever you have on that old robe is no longer there because he doesn't see that old robe because he's took in that old robe and buried it completely never to be found again and put a new robe on you he put a robe of righteousness on you and you no longer have to have that robe of unforgiveness and that robe of sin you can put on the pureness of christ the pure shiny garment of christ everlasting righteousness, the righteousness of God. He sees you for who you really are. Sometimes we don't see ourselves for who we are, but Christ sees us for who we really are. Do you know who you really are? Think hard. 
I knew who I am. I'm a child of the king. Yes. I am a royal heritage. I am a king's kid. I've been adopted by Christ himself, where I can call him Abba, Father, my God, my Redeemer, my Savior, more than a friend, more than a brother. He's my everlasting, my life eternal. You know, know who you are in Christ, because tell you what, the devil knows who you are. The devil knows if you're serving God, and the devil knows if you're not serving God. The devil knows where your walk is, is in Christ, if you're strong in God, or if you're weak in God. The devil knows. The devil knows your weaknesses. The devil knows your strength. And if the devil knows you, you should know who? Yourself. Even better than the devil knows you. Right? Because you're no longer who? You're no longer the old person. You're a new person in Christ. So you know that you're a child of the king. You should stand as a child of the what? The king. The king. king. Stand strong in Christ. Those who are in Christ stand strong. When they put their hands to the plow, do they look backwards? No. No. They look straight ahead. So they go ahead and they go towards Christ. They don't look what in the past. So don't look in your rear view mirror. Your, don't look in the rear view mirror to see where you've, where you've been. Look forward to know where you're going. Amen. Where you're going in Christ Jesus. Don't worry about where your past was and where what what with the you know this that the thing what you did in your past. Thank God for what you've done today in Christ. What God's going to do for you tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day, because don't worry about your past; it's gone. Don't worry about your future because you know where your future is going to be in Christ Jesus as long as you walk in Christ. Worry about your day today. Look out for your life today mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. What can I do today to be stronger in Christ today that will take me into tomorrow so I can be strong again tomorrow? That's why the Bible says that we're to repent daily. That's why the Bible says don't let the sun go down on your what? Wrath. Your wrath. Don't let the sun go down wrath. on your anger. If you got an anger, you slipped up a bit, pray and ask for forgiveness. Repent daily. Read your Bible daily. Don't worry about what you didn't read yesterday. Worry about your, what you're reading today. Don't worry what you're going to read tomorrow because God will give you something tomorrow. Yes, Sheila? Amen. Amen. I'm amen. Saying. <laughs> okay, amen. I was hoping that Joanne would be on there waving her flags or her, her banners or <laughs> her... <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, amen. You know, wave them for the Lord. <laughs> worry about what God has for you today. Don't worry about the devil trying to tell you what you did yesterday. Worry about what you're doing today in Christ. Because the devil can't the devil can't restore what happened yesterday. Right? No. Only God can cleanse you from what happened yesterday, today, and forevermore. Only Amen. God can forgive you. The devil only wants you to slip up and fall because once you fall, then he's got his grafts in you and he's got his claws in you. Then he can lead you to leaving God and that's what we don't want to happen. So don't listen to the lies of the devil. The devil's only telling you lies because when he tells you about your past, Sheila, he's only telling you lies because they're forgiven. They've been wiped clean. They're no longer there. So you can tell them, oh, devil, you're a liar. Because that's been dealt with at the cross of Jesus. That's Amen. been forgiven. You know, I don't have to worry about that no more. He sees you for who you are, really are. A full-fledged child of the living God. Full-fledged child of the living. Not a half. You're not 1%. You're not 10%. You're not 50%. You're not 77%. But you're what percent? 100%. Okay. 99.5% won't do. You need to be 100. Be 100% knowing that I am a child of the king. Christ paid the debt for me. I can be a child of God. You know, I am a king's kid. 
oh, you're still going to have those wrinkles uh, in your life. You're going to have some wrinkles. Still going to need to be ironed out. Every good shirt that you want to wear to Sunday to church or a good dress you want to wear to church on Sunday, sometimes you got to get the iron out and get those wrinkles out of it a little bit. Press it down. Get all those wrinkles out. Okay. Sometimes we want to go to church. And a lot of times we want to go to church because what are we in church? Can anybody tell me? What are you on Sunday in church? What are you in church? A Christian. You're a Christian. On Sunday, I'm a Christian. I'm going to church. I'm going to get out my suit, my dress shirt, iron it up, press my suit, <laughs> get my tie on, do my hair, slick it back, shave all nice and clean, put on some nice smelly cologne, you know, because why? I'm going to church and I want people to know that I'm saved. Are you trying to date at church? <laughs> no, that probably wouldn't work for me, honey. <laughs> it probably wouldn't work for me. I only got beautiful feet because the Bible tells me I got beautiful feet, oh. beautiful on the feet of them that like good that bring forth good news. Yes, I always tell right. everybody I'm as ugly. I, don't get me wrong, people, but I tell everybody I'm as ugly as sin. I'm ugly, so I'm uglier than sin. I'm uglier than sin. Mm. And I say that because people are drawn to sin. People want to be in a relationship with sin. People love to invite sin into the life. I'm still a single guy. So nobody wants. So I'm ugly. Uh, like, I'm, still, I'm still single. So you don't need to wear cologne to church, Eddie. Huh? You don't need to wear cologne to church. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Old Spice, high karate. My karate. But, but you press up your suit and you want to go to church because you want people to see how good and saved you are. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Amen. How come your clothes are impressed those days? Because you don't have anybody to impress? Listen <laughs> 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 in, listen to me. We should, be impressing, we should be impressing the people all the time. Church just isn't Sunday. God in your life isn't just on Sundays and then the rest of the week you live like the devil and then go back to church and think you're saved. <laughs> no. No, we need to be Christ-like 24-7, 365 days a year, seven days a week, morning, afternoon, and night. Even when you sleep, Amen. you should be like Christ, Amen. even in your sleep. Amen. Your <laughs> dreams should be good dreams, not bad dreams. You should not be dreaming things you should not be dreaming that are not godly dreams. You got to get those dreams out of your mind. <laughs> There you go. You gotta live That's holy. You, know? you gotta live right for Jesus. You know, get that out of my mind. No, thank you, Lord. You know, yeah. You don't want to be running like with the devil. You know, you know, and you don't want to be playing the fiddle of gold. You know, you want you want to have a harp of gold, not a fiddle of gold. <laughs> you know, so you have to live for Christ every single day. Don't let the devil beat you up and tell you you can't be a 24 hour, seven days a week, 365 day a year Christian, 24 hours a day. You can be saved every single hour of the day, every day of the week, every year for a lifetime. You have to choose to have that lifestyle. You think being a Christian is easy? No, we're going to have our wrinkles, but we have to clean up our wrinkles. We we're not going to be perfect, but we have to work on it. The Bible says... God is looking for a church without spot or wrinkle, right? Yeah. Are you the church is looking for without spot or wrinkle? Is in the building? Sorry, I tell you, girls, I tell you, gentlemen on here and ladies, he ain't looking for a church that is a building made out of clay and mortar and bricks. No, he's looking for what building? This building, yes. right here. The Bible says, know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of God. You are the temple of the Spirit of God. Is your temple ready? Are you purifying your temple? Are you cleaning your house from the inside out? I tell you, if you can sweep them off your floors in your physical house, you can sweep them off the floors in your spiritual home. Get that holy temple inside cleaned out. Get out the Windex, clean the windows. Get out the pine saw, clean up the floors, clean up the counters, clean up the walls. Don't just sweep them up, but you better dust too. 
because sometimes the dust lays around longer than the floor dirt. You see the floor dirt, but sometimes you miss the dirt of the dust that's hanging on the end of the shelf or on the on the picture on the wall. You kind of forget to dust that picture off. You kind of forget to lift the carpet up and get underneath that carpet. You know, sometimes we sweep the dirt under the carpet. No, I'm just kidding. You know, <laughs> don't sweep the dirt under the carpet. Get rid of the dirt out of, from underneath the carpet. Get down deep and do a steam cleaning. Get your house clean. Get it smelling good. You ever seen that commercial on the TV where you come nose blind from the orders in your house? So yeah. they put these air fresheners in your wall to make the house smell pretty. Yes. Yeah. Well, hey, make sure your internal spiritual life is smelling pretty good too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> see, it's a sweet smelling savor. The Bible tells us it's a sweet smelling savor. What do you think when he brought to Jesus in Bethlehem? What did he bring? What did they bring incense. the baby Jesus? Incense. Incense. And what else? Frankincense. Frankincense. Right? Oil. Myrrh. Myrrh. Right. Sweet smelling stuff. Good stuff to make it smell good. So what? What? why? There's a purpose for that. Understand that here as a body of God in the temple of the Holy Ghost, Keep your temple clean. Keep it smelling clean. I I tell you, you may not understand. What I meant by smelling clean is keep sin out of your life. Because Amen. sin sin stinks. Amen. I don't care what you say. Sin stinks. I don't care if it's a little sin or a big sin. There's no such thing as a little white lie and a big white lie. No. A lie is a lie. lie. A false witness is a false witness. An untruth is a whole untruth, not a half untruth. Okay? Sin yeah. is sin. No matter how little, how big you may think it is, sin is sin. And when you allow sin to creep in, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Then it will take over your whole, your whole being and cause you to stumble and fall. Get rid of that sin. Sin stinks. Get rid of that order that you don't realize is in there. Get rid of that. Put in the things of the sweet smelling savor of the Lord. Salvation, healing, deliverance. If you need deliverance, seek deliverance. Get on your knees and seek God. Pray that spirit out of you that you don't want in there and you can't get it out yourself. Seek help to get that spirit out of you. Because you yeah. need to get rid of it and then put in, refill that area that, that you're getting rid of the, the devil out of and that sin out of. Fill it with God's word. Fill it with God's spirit. So it's not left empty. So the devil can creep back into that area. That's why it says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the devil has no room to get in there. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Amen. We're having church. Okay. Preach it, uh, and as easy. It, okay. As you say open. As you say open to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, conviction through the Bible and through sermons, we can get conviction as we listen to the Word of God through Bible studies, through Sunday sermons, and that there we can get conviction on what we need to change in our life so we can grow. We can even find conviction in our hearts through friends, through the words that they share with us to help us to grow in Christ. If you see there's something wrong in my life, don't be afraid to let me know about it so I can change it. Because I want to be better for Christ today than I was yesterday. I want to be stronger today for Christ than I was yesterday. If I'm not going forward to be strong and growing in God, I'm like a body of water that's sitting there getting stagnant. And what happens with stagnant water? It gets infected with all kinds of diseases, plagues, bugs. It's not fit to drink. It's not fit to bathe in. It's stagnant. It stinks. It's no good. I don't want to be that kind of a Christian. I want to go forth and I want to be a river of living water. I want to be flowing in the spirit of God each day. I want the embankments of my, my the river to burst open, to reach out to others, to feed others so that they can grow and they can get washed in the blood of the land and they can get nourished and they can grow in Christ and they can let their rivers flow forward to other people. That's why he says, my cup runneth over. over you want your cup running over we want our cups running over being filled with the spirit of god to help us to grow and to mature in the lord okay 
Uh, you want to be like Christ no matter what it costs. And I'm going to do that. I want to be as much as I can be as a Christian. I want to be like Christ as much, no matter what it costs. If they come today and say, oh, you can't have your Bible no more. We're taking all your Bibles out of your house. We're taking your phone. We're making sure you got no Bible apps on there. We're canceling all Bible apps. You can't have a Bible in your home. You can't have a Bible here or there. I know I got the word in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. I have the word burning in my heart that I'm going to continue on for God no matter what costs. If it costs me my life, it costs me to be thrown in prison because I believe in Christ, take me. I'll just evangelize the prison. I'll get them all saved. And the prison guards, I'll get them saved too. I'll pray for them and minister the word of God to them and minister salvation to them so that they can come to know Christ. So throw me in jail. I'll just keep preaching. Amen. 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 Uh, but guilt gives away to itself away by beating you down. So don't let guilt get to you. Don't let the devil beat you down, make you feel guilty, and make you feel like your past sins are, are going to haunt you the rest of your life. Because nope, 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 they don't need to no more. God has forgiven them completely. Okay. Uh, turn the guilt of your past. Here's important. Okay, Sheila, this might be good for you. Turn the guilt of your past and everybody, not just Sheila, but everybody, every one of us, this would be good for us. Turn the guilt of your sins of your past into a testimony. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? I thank God that he delivered me from alcohol. I thank God that he delivered me from drugs. I thank God that he delivered mm. me out of the prison. I thank God he delivered me off the streets. I thank God he delivered me from rebellion, hate, anger, bitterness, sexual immorality. I thank God that he delivered me and set me free from the bondages of sin. I thank God. Turn what the devil had before in your old past, what he tries to remind you of, turn it into a testimony because the Bible tells us that we overcome the world by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony testimony, testimony. our testimony stomps on the devil's head the devil doesn't like it that our testimony shakes the very foundation of hell and the devil can't stand it when we share our testimony with other people and they come to know christ the devil's lost another soul in his kingdom but god has gained another soul for his kingdom Amen. Amen. So we need to draw Amen. people to Christ. Let it let our past become our testimony how God has helped us to overcome our past and that we're more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. And if God, if God can forgive Pastor Eddie, he sure can forgive me. If God can forgive Anita, Annette, God for, can forgive me. If God can forgive Catherine. God can forgive me. If God can forgive Mary, God can forgive me. If God can forgive Sheila, God can forgive me. If God can forgive Joanne, God can forgive me. And if God can forgive, how are you saying it, your name, honey? Linda? Lydia. 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 If God can forgive Lydia, forgive me, sister. <laughs> if God can forgive Lydia, God can forgive me. If people can see God can forgive you and that God can forgive them no matter where they're at in their life, then the devil wins nothing. The devil is defeated. And he knows that. He doesn't want to get defeated. So he wants to try to remember. And in closing, I'm going to say again, I'll repeat this in closing. When, always remember this. When the moment the devil tries to remind you of your past, what do you do? Remind him of his future. That's right. Remind the devil of his future. He has no future. We know at the end of the Bible what happens to the Satan and all of his followers and all of his demons. We know what happens. We have the victory. We have everlasting life in Christ Jesus. We don't have to worry Amen. about hell and whipping and gnashing and gallon of teeth. We don't have to worry about that because we have victory. The devil has lost the battle already, and he knows he's lost it, but he wants to get you to be in his service rather than God's service. So anytime he tries to remind your past, remind him of his future, and don't let him have victory over you. 
And I want to share these with you in the name of the Lord. And I hope you were blessed. Hey, and I'm going to ask, hey, hey. ask if Sister Mary, would you please close us off in a word of prayer? Okay, let us pray for yes. The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. Let his name be glorified. My Father in heaven, I glorify you. I honor you. I meditate you. I thank you for the grace of this day and this service. I cover myself and my friends with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about this. Send this message out to all your friends that you want to hear this message if, if, if you were blessed by this message. And um, yeah, get the word out there that God loves them and they can be forgiven and that their sins are forgiven and the devil can't take over them and can't remind them of their past because God has forgiven all their past. God Master, bless you all. Master Eddie, can I get your uh, verses? Yeah, yeah, I, I put out, they're on the um, ministry page. On the ministry page, it's, it's all listed there on the ministry page. But yeah, I'll, I can give it to you even right now. It's it's Romans chapter 8. 8. 1 to 4. 1 to 4. Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. 8, 15. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 34. 8, 31 to 34. And, oh, and Galatians, Galatians 3, 27. 3, 27. Okay. Okay. That's all? Uh, yeah. That's all. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I try not to put too much out there. I, I get what the Lord gives to me and then, then mm. go, okay, amen. <laughs> I thank the Lord. Amen. I thank the Lord. Yeah. Yes, sister. I just want to thank you, Pastor Edu, for this wonderful sermon of today. And may God bless you and bless everyone in the house of God today. And let's always love one another as yeah. always God loves us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And everybody remember to continue to pray for Pastor Debbie and, and Brother Larry. We you know. Will. And, and, and Pastor yeah. Debbie has to make a big decision, so we just got to keep her in prayer. She's at the hospital tonight with with Brother Larry, and um, just wishing and pray for all the best for her and Brother Larry. Keep praying. God bless you all, and thank you for coming out. Share this with your friends, and hopefully we'll see you all on Sunday. Love y'all. Yes, God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Joanne, for everything. Thank you, Sheila. Yep. Good night. Thanks for sharing, Pastor Eddie. Good night. Yeah, no God problem. loves you. God bless you. Yep. Bye. God bless Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.